Special treat for you guys today. Uh, as promised, I have another truck video coming up. Here it is. I, I, you guys know I do reviews of medium duty trucks, and if you haven't already, go ahead and check out my other videos of my medium duty trucks I've reviewed. But this is today's subject. It's a Isuzu NPR HD. It's on a, it has 16 foot bed on it. It's a rider truck. And it has the 5.2 liter inline four cylinder turbo diesel. That, I did say four cylinder, so it is a littler engine, but it also is a littler truck. Now these trucks are made in Japan, are Japanese. Uh, you can get these in a 6.0 liter V8 from a GM sourced engine and you can get it with the 5.2 liter and you can get it with a 3.0 liter diesel and this one has a 5.2 which is kind of the upper engine I believe the V8 has more horsepower but less torque this has 400 some odd foot pounds of torque and trust me you can feel it it is a very strong powerful truck it even, it's even fast walking around the truck at a glance here this one does have a lift gate a Walt Co 2000 pound lift gate these trucks are really reliable I've seen them with 300,000 400,000 miles all right that's our quick walk around well, let me hop over here we'll kind of do it close here this looks to be, I think these are 16, five tires, 16. The rim is 16. They almost look like 19 tires, but they're 16. It's riding on Bridgestone Durives, I believe it says. Uh, the kind of a different door handle than most of the American trucks. Kind of turn signal on the side. Uh, these mirrors are really good, much better than those Ford that Ford re I reviewed last time. You couldn't see anything out of that. But, these ones are good. Over here, you got looks to be a fuse kit or yeah, fuses in there. You got your uh, cab raised and lower. Back under this is a cab over, so your engine's under here. Got a fuel filter, your def tank with a uh, sight here, which is pretty easy to see. Uh, battery box. And something weird I notice about these Azuzus is look how many holes are in the frame for upfitters to put uh, different bodies and attachments and boxes. Like, see, you can tons and tons of holes. There's a hole every inch. And uh, this is a spring uh, chassis, uh, spring suspension in the rear here. These are also Bridgestones. I would imagine that's what came with it. Big mud flap. Pretty cool. Uh, your diesel fill is back here. Walking around this way. This has the single unit lights. Instead of the, a lot of times you have the two separate, this one's got a single unit. Grab handles, the normal. I mean, this is more for the body, but Walt Co lift. Uh, I'll turn that. We'll go turn that on and I'll raise it down and out. Now I do have. I don't like the lifts on these trucks. They always seem too short to me. I don't. You can't get a pallet on them safely. You can, but you, you can't do it safely. They're, you got to kind of teeter totters and hangs off. Um, but undo it. You can just. Let's see here. These are always a pain. There we go. But this, this one really needs some grease. As you can see, from there it flips out once, twice. It's about three and a half foot, I'd say. Maybe four foot, if that. But it's pretty quick. It's capable of 2,000 pounds. And then just hook it back in there. Actually, I think it goes, yeah, it goes to the bottom. Somebody's bent the crap out of that one. 
but there's a step ladder here it's not the flexible ladder which makes it easier on the backing up steep driveways these get caught a lot a lot of times on steep slopes and it'll high center the truck and you won't be able to go anywhere so it is dock somewhat dock height i guess got uh rear rubber guards there there's its last inspection there's a walt co it's like it's got some damage there from whoever was playing with this thing last somebody bent the mud flap on this one more uh bridge tones I'm kind of surprised for a uh, rider usually I'd say this is about 50% tread left on this tire. This truck has 30,000 miles, 38,000 miles on it. And you got about a little bit more than 3 8 tread. I wouldn't say half, but a little bit more than 3 8 Same thing on this side. Tons of uh, application holes, different holes you can mount upfit things to. Now this giant thing is the emission system. You got your DPF, your SCR, all in this package here. It's giant. This is this is going to be your doser for your diesel exhaust fluid. But you got actually this is a really good. You can see most of it. Your first one is probably your uh, diesel particulate filter back in there. That's going to capture your black soot. Your next stage is going to be your SCR, your selective catalyst reduction, which is. Uh, converting most of this nitric nitrous oxides and that kind of stuff into carbon dioxide and you got your uh, further treatment wraps back around and comes out this exhaust pipe which you can see somewhat works somewhat doesn't there's still black soot getting through but it's much better now I kind of like these these carton systems are kind of cooler compared to the um, the other you know, like underneath an international or freightliner where it's all in line, this is kind of compressed and condensed into one little package unit. Kind of cool. Uh, of course, this is a smaller engine. I believe this is a five-speed transmission. It transmission shifts pretty good. I'll let you get try to see under there. Like I said earlier, this is hydraulic brakes. That emission system takes up a good side, good portion of the frame rails there so if you're an upfitter and you need that space uh, pretty much count it out unless you plan on doing a stack style um, system this is your air intake this big plenum and your air filters in here which I, I don't know if this is completely waterproof or not so like I don't know if you can forward water up to that point because it's got this snorkel kit I'm guessing so but it, it is up uh, that is up there over here uh, you got your looks like your coolant over here and steering power steering fluid we'll stop over here and I'll show you your washer fluids really weird right here you can see it though I don't like having fluids inside the, the truck that's just me and here's some more information hopefully it zooms it focuses on that it's got the 4HK1 5.2 liter turbocharged engine. And then more information, built during 2017 calendar year. So I guess this potentially could be a 2017 or 2018, but I believe that is a pretty much means it's a 2017. Moving on, we'll get to the interior in a second. Same mirrors on this side, uh, really cool. Uh, blinkers on the door. So when operating this truck, I notice from previous experience and watching accidents in this truck, the biggest blind spot of this, of this truck is this general area right here. You can't see this area at all when driving this truck, even with the blind spot. So if you got a small car right here, you're totally going to miss um, them. And so you got to be careful when driving that. Um, this area right here is a pretty big blind spot. Pretty much standard for most trucks i don't know why it just seems worse on this one i don't know it's maybe it's me front uh grill it's got a big not as robust feels actually it's plastic underneath you can see the radiator and all different kinds of stuff it's kind of back there actually you got a mud flap now that that radiator is pretty exposed to the elements so that's something you'd want to keep out for and actually over here 
looks like your air conditioner condenser actually has been hit once surprised it still cools and I I know for a fact that those don't definitely don't last 300,000 miles because I've worked on a truck that didn't have air conditioning of this style and it was broken but as you can see these some of this a lot of these components are very exposed like that AC condenser Zuzu diesel yeah I don't I want I don't believe this comes up at all yeah there's screws holding it in and I'm gonna try to flip the cab over we're gonna try that this truck is certified for clean idle in California last inspected February 2018 all right moving on we're gonna go inside the cab here cabs basic this this has been the same cab for years with the Zuzu there's really not fundamentally not much has changed in the interior wise and it works it, it, it keeps up uh, just fine it holds up very well not too much to complain over here you got a little magazine cubby with some change in it um, big grab handle here this one has electric windows I'm not sure if this is a standard option with the Zuzu but it does have automatic driver window and it's got a passenger window right here and they're electric which is nice uh, the regular grab handle manual locks like I said the grab handles are important in this truck because as you can see getting in it is very awkward it's very it's kind of difficult especially if you're a heavier person it becomes difficult or maybe uh, you're not used to kind of flexing to get into the vehicle it becomes difficult you got a grab rail here here and here and for the driver the best thing to do is just walk up and grab the steering wheel and heave yourself in there it is manual adjustments all the way around you can adjust this thing these trucks are really good for short people you can adjust this thing practically so it's touching the steering wheel um, here's your adjustment for your backrest the steering wheel is adjustable as well this knob right here which this is something I've begged for it's tilting and telescoping as you can see that's telescoped which you don't I begged and begged and begged for trucks the see trucks with that and this truck has it so that's kind of nice and while we're down here on the floor these trucks aren't very they they're not very well finished if if you compare it to say a Freightliner or a international there's a lot of exposed stuff which is okay um, you know as long as it holds up uh, that's all right so we're gonna hop into here Cargo lamp, box lamp, your lift gate power. On this side, you got your dimming, your window, um, your power locks. Actually, this is power locks. Uh, this usually, yeah, this is something common on Azuzus. Is you can check your odometer. You hold that button down, and you can see how many trip your trip miles. Something good for fleet vehicles, so you don't have to start up the truck. Over here, you have your oil check, and you can see it lights up green because it's very difficult to check the oil in this because it's underneath the actual cab. You have to raise the cab up. And you can see when you press it, you get a nice little green oil light signifying your oil is good. On this side, you have your bright, uh, your headlights. You can see the inside of it lights up. Uh, your cruise control is right here, and your cruise master is right here, I believe. I have yet to use cruise, so I can't really say. Uh, this is your brights. They call it a pass light. On this side, things get a little bit more interesting. You can move this lever. This lever has two positions. Up is off for the engine brake, which is an exhaust brake. And down turn leaves the exhaust brake on, and it kicks on whenever you release from the gas. Here's your windshield washer and your washer fluid comes out with this button now this engine brake works it does it's not as near as strong as the ISB Cummins the 6.7 it is it's actually fairly weak compared to that it this the combo with the transmission and the engine braking doesn't work very well and it doesn't downshift to help that engine brake get it like rev up the engine and end brake engine brake well it does it just doesn't not sure why exactly uh, there's your hazards this radio is okay. I, I'd much rather see a knob radio, but it works. 
The air conditioning is a little bit lackluster for the size of this cab. This cab is bigger than that Ford F650 cab for sure. And the air conditioner doesn't necessarily keep up. The best air conditioner I've seen in a medium duty truck is the Internationals have really good air conditioning. Uh, I believe they're class leading, but it's just your standard um, controls. And you can actually hear it changing the venting system in the back manually. Get your fan, this is your uh, air conditioner and your temperature control. And this is uh, recirculate or pull fresh air. It does have a USB. And on this down here, I'm not exactly, I believe that has something to do with, uh, like if, I'm not sure, it's some kind of card reader. Maybe if you're not in the United States, it reads driver's cards. I think that's what that's for. I'm not 100% sure. You got a whole bunch of upfitter button switches down here, a 12 volt outlet. It looks like another 12 volt outlet down here as well. A, a hook for something, who knows what. And a bunch of cubbies. Ryder likes to put these little phone holders in, which are really nice. I don't know who makes these phone holders, but they're probably the best I've used before. And they're very good at holding um, your phone for the GPS. If you guys watch my driving video, you'll see that. Your shifter is here in the center console with overdrive off. You got park, reverse, neutral, drive, two, one. Over here, you got a cup holder and just a place to put junk, maybe your phone if it doesn't fit in there. Now, forgive the dirtiness of this truck. Ryder gave me this truck very dirty. Uh, last truck I had from there was very clean, so I don't know why I, it's dirty. You can give you a second to read it that. That's Spanish or French. It says, remember you're driving a truck. Little cubbies up here. It's just got the insurance permit books, that kind of stuff. You got coat hangers back here. If you hit this button right here, you have a nice little tray to put maybe a clipboard or paperwork. Uh, another tray back here, fire extinguisher, uh, safety stuff, since this truck is used commercially. This is a three-person cab, and the engine's right below you, so keep that in mind. And we'll walk to the other side here to do the passenger side. Uh, like I said earlier, the washer fluid is over here. The seat is right here. It's cloth seat. I believe there is an option to get more robust cloth seating. This one's not very robust. It's actually, I don't know if you can see that, but there's just dust falling off of it. Over here, you got a glove box with the manuals, Yokohama. So I'm guessing these truck tires have been replaced before. Uh, some manual information. Actually, it says it has Bridgestone on there. Still brand new in the package. I guess it's, it's a good sign that nobody's ever really read it. Oh, there we go, 2018. So it is a 2018 truck. It's kind of goofy, the manual doesn't fit in the glove box. It is rubber flooring, but you guys can see this. these trucks aren't very well upfitted at all. It's just kind of thrown in there. But I mean, with the Zuzu, you're really paying for the the chassis and the engine and the cab over. These things last forever. Uh, you got a self-cleaning step. Electric window on this side. And the grab handle. Quick little thing going on there. Um, let's start it up. This being a four-cylinder, it kind of sounds like a tractor. I'll get up and do it. Hmm. One second, you guys. Alright, back with you guys. Apparently it acts like a Ford and where the steering wheel keeps the key knob from rolling it open. But there you go. You guys can see the dash. I'll crank it over here. Very, 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 very quiet truck, you guys. Um, as you can see, my average fuel mileage, 12.6, which is pretty good. I know about a truck this size with a gas would get about 9 or 10. Uh, that's mostly city too.
click through that. Uh, this is your particulate matter level, so your DPF, how clogged it is. Engine oil, life on the, well, life on the engine oil, voltage, today's date, hour meter. Hopefully you guys can see that. I know this camera's kind of got 1300 hours on this puppy, dimmer, language. And this knob, you can also turn left or right to flick through things. See, so yeah, you can flick through the clock, hour meter, dimmer, a bunch of different languages. And you got trip, and you got instant miles per gallon, and average. All right, I'm gonna turn on the lights so you guys can actually see in here. There you go, nice and orange. This truck has, let's get back over here. 38,718 miles. Uh, what else you got on the dash? Temperature gauge, diesel fuel gauge. This is your exhaust. Um, turns on your engine brake. You can see, flick it down, comes on, flick it up, turns off. And yeah, this is your DPF regen, the new emissions stuff. And you got a little light up here too. Visors. I find that these Azuzus are, uh, you know, if it's really sunny out, it's not as bad as the old Azuzus where the cat, the dash was really low, but sometimes you get a really bad knee sunburn. Kind of odd. But yeah. Read about this Morgan body here. So you can get 14.5 in this thing. Not too shabby. I'll let you guys listen to this engine here. It sounds like a tractor, you guys. It really does. And there's no rev limiter on this, so you can bounce this at 3,000 RPM if you wanted to. Sounds cool. These doors open all the way to its 90 degree angle. Little horn. Sounds really Japanese-ish. All right, I'm gonna try some, you guys. I'm gonna try to open the cab up. I've never done it on one of these, so. Give me some time to figure that out, and I'll be right back with you guys. All right, you guys, I pop, I managed to pop the hood here, but barely. I don't want it to roll over because I don't think I'll be able to push it back up. But as you guys can see, here's the engine. It's a little four-cylinder. Put you guys over the data plate here. This one looks like it says 210 horsepower or so four-cylinder kind of compact in here uh, there's your engine fan starters down there pretty much it doesn't it's honestly looks pretty easy to work on I don't want to get it to the point where I won't be able to flip back over you guys but as you can see there's the oil dipstick right there your air intake goes into your inner cooler. We're gonna flip this down here momentarily. And I'm gonna to run to the other side. Hopefully it stays. Okay, hopefully it stays there. On this side, let's see if I can find something. I don't know what you're supposed to grab on on this side try the door handle here on this side you guys can see the turbo right there going in down into your inner cooler that looks like some kind of EGR system going back and to cool down but pretty quaint little engine inside here you got some noise dampening materials up there as well different odds and ends transmission back there says MOG 48 
that's your important part right there that is your turbo and it has the exhaust brake in it as well or just before it trying to get you guys a good view you got your alternator down there as well looks like it has a fuel injector post uh, after the turbo for the diesel particulate filter maybe you're looking at it right dead ahead there I'm guessing that it, that's how it does its regens but that's a pretty big four uh, 5.2 liters is a huge four-cylinder engine um, but yeah it's snorkel so there you guys go it's pretty pretty cool to see that engine in there I don't know if it'll let me start it up maybe we'll see come back over here don't know if it'll let me start it up or not. Yep, it's gonna let me. There you guys go. Get a viewing shot of that little four cylinder going. you guys so overall just to conclude would I say what I recommend this truck to potential buyers I think I would uh, just I would I would definitely get it in the diesel it there the diesels longevity is significantly longer than the gas engine although the gas engine is very popular with this I think I think the diesel is a much better value I think it returns uh, it would return your investment but the the Japanese know what they're doing when it comes to small trucks. I mean, most small trucks nowadays are Japanese, like Hinu and all those other um, Japanese companies that the, that make these. UD is another one, like uh, UD's Nissan. They make great products that are, I mean, they're not the most comfortable or the most uh, fit and finish wise built truck, but they do last and they last a long time. But all right, you guys, tell me what you think. Let me know if you guys want to see more of these videos. Give me your truck suggestions. Hopefully I have some more coming in the future. But uh, just let me know, you guys. Uh, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, and subscribe.